In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Click to Reveal widget in the all-new Adobe Captivate. With Adobe Captivate 2019, or if you will, Adobe Captivate Classic, and earlier, I never really paid much attention to the learning interactions that were included as part of the software. They were pretty basic and there was really no opportunity to do things like uh, force navigation. So I'm pretty excited about these and I think they're just customizable enough to be useful for many situations within designing and developing e-learning. Let's take a look at the click to reveal widget today and I'll show you some of the things that you can do with this. To add a widget to a particular slide in the all new Adobe Captivate, you simply click on the add new widget icon in your toolbar. So I'm going to do that now and we will select click to reveal. So the default click to reveal shows up here. If you want to customize the look and feel of this particular widget, what I recommend that you do is take a look at this video I've already recorded on the theme builder. And I'll show you where you can get the theme builder right now. You can access that from the project properties icon in the bottom right hand corner. If I click on that right now, you'll see that the current theme is the built in light theme. And if you're like me and not a big fan of serif fonts, you could, for example, go in, edit this theme, click on the font palette. And here at the top where it indicates that some of the fonts used in this project are the Georgia font, which is definitely a font that has serifs in it. You could simply change that to another font somewhere in this list of fonts here. I really encourage people to try out the Google fonts. There's quite a selection in there and this will actually inject the code needed to display the web font when you publish this for responsive design. So I'm gonna use the Anton font for all my headings. Click on apply and when I return to my slide, you can see that this has already been updated with the new font. So I could go ahead and change my title. Additional hazards is the topic of this click to reveal. And if we go back to the visual properties of this slide, if we click away from that title there, we can see the various choices that are available to you for click to reveal widgets. First of all, collapsed is the alignment and spacing. If you were considering trying to match it to other slides where you had maybe some horizontal padding already applied, you could change that. Here, I'm gonna change that to 80 and give myself 10% on the left and the right here. You can also adjust the content spacing if it doesn't suit you. I think it's fine where it is. As far as the number of cards are concerned, I find a click to reveal with six, probably too many for most situations. And at that point, I would probably switch to a carousel widget at the, that point. Um, and my hope is that Adobe looks at considering expanding the carousel widget to include a heck of a lot more items than it currently has. But we can look for that in a future version. We'll stick with four for this particular project here. You can see you've got some design options. Now this might not seem like very much, you've only got four options here, but keep in mind there's a lot of customization that you can do within each of these design choices. Let's select this option down here. We'll go with that for starters. And we can do a few things right off the bat. So when you're thinking about designing in the all new Adobe Captivate, consider the fact that this whole thing is what I would describe as a block. And a block contains many components. So you might not want to display a title for this slide, which would give you more room for your, your content there. Uh, icons I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna use different icons than what are here. Uh, the caption is fine. I think I'll use that. And we're gonna have our previous and next button. Now that reminds me, um, if you are going to use force navigation or hiding or disabling the next button until the user has clicked all of these items here, you can actually go into the TOC and play bar controls, which the icon for it is right here. 
And from here, we can decide to show or hide our table of contents. I'm going to keep it hidden. And if we go to play bar, we can actually choose to uh, deselect any of the controls that you wish or simply disable the entire play bar. And I can, of course, now close this here. If we scroll down a little ways here, you can see that there are some further customizations that we can do to the overall appearance of this. Um, I'm not crazy about this gradient here, so I think what I'm going to do is change that to a solid color. Maybe just sort of an off-white might be appropriate, because I do want to see these card title areas here, maybe even a little bit more gray. And of course, you can choose anything from the full color palette if you wish. Don't need an inner shadow, but if you do want the force navigation to work, which it is on by default, open up the settings section of your visible properties and make sure that move to next slide when the widget completes is selected. If you want to speed things up for your learners, you can go ahead and reveal the first card right off the bat. But I usually like to have like a little introduction, maybe some audio that says, you know, click on each of the click to reveals to learn more. Once you've finished exploring this page, press the next button to continue that sort of thing. But that's pretty much it. So now we can customize the individual components. So in this case here, maybe the first thing I'd like to do is change the background color for all of these. I don't want multiple colors here. So I think what I'll do is select this hexadecimal code and one by one select each of these items and paste that in so that they're all the same. And that should be pretty straightforward and easy to do. There we go. So that's done. I do have different icons in planned for this interaction here. So I'm going to click on those and click again to select the icon. And over here in the visual properties, you'll see, of course, we have the opportunity to replace the SVG. So I can do this from either the asset store in Adobe Captivate, or if you have something on your computer already in mind, you can navigate to where those are stored here. So this first one relates to working near water. So I'm using this particular icon. And the second item is additional emergency equipment. So I just have a, an alert symbol that I have planned to use for this, like right, like that. I like how Captivate is smart enough to choose contrasting colors for these icons. I don't know if that's by design or by accident here. The third item is called lockout tag out. So I'm going to use a tag. And the final one has to do with keeping in touch when you're working alone. So I'm going to select the icon that shows a mobile phone. So let's add some titles in here. You can just double click on those and I'll just type in working near water. And this one here, emergency equipment. And this one will be energized equipment. And this last one will be working alone. Now, these, of course, are just the clicks. Where's the reveal? Well, that's done through these overlays that you see on the bottom here. If I have four clicks, then I have four overlays. If I have three, I have three, and so on. So by clicking on one of the these, I can see the layout for that particular design here. Just like a block has various different components, so do these overlays. So we can turn on or off what we wish to keep or don't keep. I'm going to turn off this overlay title and just keep that overlay label. You can choose from several design options as well, but we'll just stick with this one for right now. If I wish to change this image that I see right here, I can right click on this and select replace image. I can choose something from the asset store or alternatively, I can select something that I've already selected on my system here, which I already have in mind. So we'll just find working around water. Now, in this case here, you can see that our character in this image isn't uh, exactly what I would describe as centered in this, uh, in this preview here. So let's double click on that guy and using the selection handles, 
choose a layout that's more appropriate for this particular, and I'm looking here, but I'm moving over here. And if I press save, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna call this working around water. And I have some text already planned for this and I'm just gonna paste that in. I've copied it from another document there. We can go ahead and close this using the actual interaction itself. And we can select overlay two and start to customize that. So I'm gonna remove the overlay title. We're going to right click on this and replace the image. And this has to do with uh, emergency showers, eye wash stations, and so on. So I'm just gonna select the image I have planned for that, which is this one here. And if I double click again, we can choose a layout that might be appropriate for this. Press save and uh, emergency equipment. Like before, I have some text for that, so I'll paste that in. And we'll go ahead and click on Overlay 2. Uncheck what I'm not going to use in the components. And we'll right-click on this and replace image from my computer. So I'm going to double-click on that. And again, just choose the crop so I get a nice close-up of that literal lockout lock. I think that looks good there. And see, it doesn't take very long to customize these widgets. This last one is working alone, and we've got some text prepared for that as well. And I'll right click on the image and replace the image with, again, that other image I had in mind for this here. Working alone, you want to stay in constant contact. So you want to have your cell phone handy. And this particular organization uses a mobile phone app called Checkmate. If you wanted to provide additional information that was outside of the scope of this course, you could actually put links in these, um, these click to reveals here. So I'm gonna select the word Checkmate and we'll go down to link here. And I'm just gonna paste in that particular organization's website there. It doesn't seem to add an underline or change the text to indicate that it is. Maybe it does something later, but I'm going to go ahead and have it stand out by underlining that and maybe we'll change the text color to what you'd expect to see for a hyperlink. Maybe blue is a good choice there. So that looks good and we can go ahead and close this now. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. We've done everything that we wish to do with this particular interaction. One of the things that I want to point out is that when you are previewing in Adobe Captivate, one of the things I've seen people on the forum saying is, hey, whatever happened to preview next five slides? The cool thing about the all new Adobe Captivate is whatever slide you have selected is where you're going to preview from. So if you want to preview the whole project, select slide one. If you want to preview from slide 20, select slide 20. You can also, of course, generate a device preview, and this will allow you to point your phone's camera at this QR code and see what this project will look like on an iPhone or an Android device. Uh, we're not going to do that right now, but check that out when you have a second. Let's preview this in a normal browser. So you can see here, uh, this is a specialized preview where we can see it under all different circumstances, desktop, tablet, smartphone, smartphone landscape, and of course, full screen as well. Let's just look at it on desktop for now. Let's click on this to start that up. And we can click on any of these icons and we can see working around water. That's fantastic. And of course, it has a selected or visited state for that particular icon, which is nice. And if necessary, there is the ability to scroll text, energized equipment, there we go. And of course, notice that our next button is still disabled because we've only visited three of the four click to reveals. And let's click the final working alone here. Our next button is now enabled because we visited this. And of course, there's our hyperlink. Let's click on that. And of course, this will open that particular tools website where learners can learn a little bit more about this app if they wish to install it on their phone. Now that you're done, you can close this 
and continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.